Hey guys, welcome back. This is Ty with another Space, video for you. The final frontier. And uh, what you're These looking at is my Star Trek Next Generation pinball machine. To explore strange Let's wait for uh, Cat to, to finish here. New life and new civilizations to boldly go where no one has gone before. Okay, now that uh, Captain Picard is done speaking. Um, anyway, so I picked this up back in July. I still haven't done a really video f about the game itself. Um, but last night I downloaded for my Android phone uh, Pinball Arcade with the newest uh, table, Star Trek Next Generation. Um, let's see here. So there it is right there. Now, uh... I want to say that uh, well, I'm going to start talking about the things that I that are I think are not accurate about this pinball mach machine in the in this uh, game. Um, I really want to say first that this is a really an excellent conversion of a pinball machine to um, to a phone or even to any uh, mobile device. Um, but that said, um, you know these things never never convert accurately anyway so um let me turn it this way because it actually looks better from this perspective okay so there it is right there and it's really hard to focus with this flip camera but just to give you a little idea there now if you really want to see what it looks like i suggest that you just download it for your iphone android device i don't know if this i think this is on um some home consoles or pcs i'm not sure i don't really haven't really looked that up but uh the uh, table is modeled pretty accurately. Um, there's some inconsistencies, at least in terms of the way it looks. Um, the first thing is that the DMD is red on this game. When on a real Star Trek Next Generation, the DMD is yellow. Um, the Borg ship doesn't look quite right um, in terms of the details. Um, it's it's shaped the right way. And the play field, the intensity of the colors are really... It's very vibrant versus the actual table, which is a little isn't quite over the top. It's pretty purple, but... Um, I wouldn't say it's ex it's like this is. All right, so uh, let me just get in here a little bit. Gonna, let me see if I can set this up so you guys can see it. All right. Okay, so. All right. So now I'm just gonna. All right. Set that up like that. Move this camera up a little bit. Get that nice and square. At least as much as I can. Okay, so it's going to be blurry. There's not much that can be done about that. So I'm just going to start up a game here. Welcome to the Enterprise. Now, one thing, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the sound is pretty staticky on this. There's a lot of noise going on, and I don't know if it's just because it's the Android version. Um, but it's uh, pretty pretty darn staticky. Now the other thing is this game plays so fast. It's way faster than the original. Um, my uh, Star Trek is set to 6.5 degree play field. And that's pretty much standard. And uh, this is playing way faster. At least when the ball comes down the field. Um, I, I would guess this is probably a lot easier to play on a larger device as well. But, but the ball rolls down the field so quickly, and especially runs off the flippers very fast. Um, and that's one of the things about modeling these things, is that the flippers have a different resistance than the side rails. Another thing, too, is, is like I said, the colors. Um, and it's hard to see like this. I'm going to take it off just so you can see it better. And I'm going to use my magnifying lens. It's getting close. Okay, so you see the um, the lighted, I guess, what do you call these things right here? Um, you see that they're, they're gray with white lights underneath them. On this, they just the, the white light shows through so much that they just look yellow. And so the it looks, uh, looks wrong. Um... These star posters kind of look kind of dull. Um, and as you can see, the play field is really intense in color. Um, <laughs> it's 
try to get this just right. Same thing with all the targets. Everything has a very high intensity. This pop bump bumper is supposed to be lit in the game, but it's not lit in this at all. Um, but, uh, and like, look at the, the Romulan's skin. Very intense. Um, I'm not sure what was going on there. I don't know if they were trying to, uh, they were thinking the play fields were faded, but as you can see, Come. that he's not that intense in color. Um, there's that pop bumper that is supposed to be lit. Um, and now mine, the Klingon ship faced this way. Um, and you can't rotate them, so I'm not exactly sure what the deal is. I mean, I suppose you could have maybe you loosened something up inside, but um, he, they have him facing up the play field, um, which I'll have to check that out. I'm, I'm never, I wasn't quite sure about how that's supposed to face, but, um, and this is, you know, hard to m match is the uh, stainless steel here. On this, it just looks like dark gray. So I get this on right. Oops. There we go. You can see it's like a grayish kind of look to it. Not, you know, on the device it might may it's like you're playing on a PC or something, it might look a lot better. Um, but there, I just I think the colors are so intense that you barely see the lights. Um, so I think they went a little over top, over the top there. Um, but again, the uh, it's still a great game. Um, well, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna show you a little bit of my. Star Trek Next Generation, and this is going to be really hard to film this. Um, I'm not sure how people do this. I mean, at least my, my foot camera, the, the focal distance is just all wrong on this. And I might try recording. I can't really record it on my phone here. I'm just going to... Maybe if I put, my, put the camera down nice and low. You can see it like this. Have to be like a mile away though. <laughs> uh, I can't even reach it. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. I have to go high into the side, I guess, on this. Turn the volume down that. Okay. This has to be so far away. Anybody who uh, wants to record videos for games, a flip phone is not the ideal device to use for this. But really, uh, you know, you guys, you're not going to be able to see this uh, particularly great, but uh, I just want you to get an idea of the speed of the game. Um, I'm going to do a full review of this. I'm going to take the glass off so you at least can see it a little bit better. But this uh, flip phone with its fixed focal length lens is just is not the best for doing this. So I'm going to have to get a stool to kind of get down low so I'm not blocking your view. Alright. Alright guys, here we go. Come on, just... There we go. Hello. Not why this happens sometimes. It just doesn't start up. Welcome to the Enterprise. It's set on free play, but I guess I had to give it a credit for some reason. Enterprise, the board have entered Federation space. Intercept immediately. That will be out. Course laid out, sir. Engage. The other thing is that it's really hard to get a good look at the uh, play field, the angles you can play it at, and um, aiming, aiming um, your shots is really hard. Like this, from this angle that I'm playing right now, it's darn impossible. Uh, but on the real, com on the real machine, you get yourself right in and aim your shots up nice. See how much slower the ball goes when it gets down to the bottom of the field.
Okay guys, so that's I just want to show you a little just get you a feel of the speed of the play difference. Um I'm gonna just open this door. There you go. Just so it's not uh making a lot of noise. But again, um the game's great. It's a both both are very fun. Um but if you're ex just just to give you an idea, if you're expecting that the um, pinball arcade version of this is is will give you a good impression of what the real machines like playing, or um, Space, the final here we go. frontier. <laughs> These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. <coughs> it's continuous mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. But. Uh, yeah, it's it's um it's nothing like playing the real thing. Um, I I'm a big fan of video pinball, and uh, this is fun. It's definitely a very fun game. Um, but again, if you're you gotta just understand that um, don't think badly of the pinball, the actual pinball machine, or think it's anything like playing the real one. If you have never played a real Star Trek Next Generation, I was very fortunate, um, thanks to Nathan Barnett, to be able to afford this pinball machine. Um, this has been a, it's always been a dream of mine to own one of these, so, um, I've always, I used to play this back in the day, and I put tons of quarters in it, and, uh, I'm a big Star Trek fan as well, so it's a, uh, it's really, it's awesome to have one, um, mine's in really great shape, um, 6 a.m., um, and, uh, I really couldn't be happier with it, um, the only thing I ever had to do on this thing is I had to change one little spring out of the uh, the uh, trigger here. And on the trough optos that are down inside there, um, I had to replace one um, infrared LED. And what else did I do? Oh, and then the drop target here, um, which is up, in, up underneath the board ship there, which is the lock. Um, that was set a little bit low, so I had to raise that up a little bit. Um, that's all I had to do with this machine. It really is in uh, excellent condition. Um, um, there are a few light bulbs out on it that I need to replace. There's a one out here. There's one out there. Oh, and <laughs> there. And uh, something else is out. Um, I forget what else is out, but I, I just haven't had a chance to uh, go and change them. I mean, I've had this thing since July, but I've got a lot of projects I'm working on, and the game plays fine like it is right now. Um, ah, it's right here. It's the uh, center... Uh, let's see here. Multipliers held. Although I've seen that light up. Maybe it's going out recently. Um, but yeah. So that's the, uh, that's my Star Trek Next Generation. Um, again, uh, this is great. It's fun. It, one of the great things about it is that you can learn the rules of the game because it has a nice description of the rules. And, uh, you can get some practice in, um, you know, on playing the game, at least so that you understand how the, how the rule set works and play it. It's gonna. I think it's more difficult than the actual game. I suppose I could make mine as difficult if I jacked up the back legs much higher than it is right now. Um, but um, and I don't have. I've got an inclinometer app on my phone as well as I have uh, this guy right here. Now this is not. This is the top of of the glass, so it's not going to read right um, because if you're looking at it here, it's saying um, almost ten, a little over ten degrees, but that's not. That's not accurate at all because you really want to measure the play field. But you need something like this to uh, um, get your angle on your play field right. Now, matter of fact, I'll show you this on my phone. And I use this on my old phone, so I don't even know if it how well it works on this. But let's see here. Did it install? Because I set it to install, but I don't know if it did or not. Here, clinometer. 
Okay, so here. And it's pretty intense in the... So, this is a great little app. You can just set it on a device, and you can measure the angle. It has like a bubble inclinometer on it. And, uh... There. See, it's saying it's tw it's saying it's like 12 degrees, just like the other one was reading. Um, so it's great. You can set it right on your play field, get a measure of the angle. On this, it's uh, on the Quicksilver. It's pretty accurate because the glass is almost the same as the play field because it, it's the same distance. I don't think there's even any angle difference between the two. But on a Star Trek, put this back down again. You can see that the glass, the play field slopes at much less of an angle than the cabinet does. That's to fit all the toys and gadgets inside of it. Whereas uh, on a Quicksilver, there's not, it's just standard pop bumpers, drop targets, stuff like that. So the distance between the glass and the play field is the same all the way up the field, where in this, it gets pretty pretty darn deep. Um, so yeah, um, video's very long here, 16 minutes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't want anybody to think that I dislike the uh, the Pinball Arcade app. Um, I think it's great, and uh, but uh, just to let people know that you're not playing the same thing when you play that. Um, it's You know how people argue about MAME not being the same as playing the real thing? And I'm one of those people that agrees with that, but it's not as different um, playing MAME from an arcade machine other than like the feeling and maybe the frame rate on it um, and some of the speed, sound, stuff like that. But that's it's much closer than it is to playing this pinball arcade because... Um, simulating a pinball machine is more than just a simple simulation. There's a lot of, I mean, it's, it involves physics, and uh, you have different coefficients of friction. You've got the the rubber on the flippers, which um, slows the ball down more than than this part does here. Um, it flows, it goes faster in the rails, and so I'm assuming that when they do this and they make these uh, simulations, they kind of have to. Um, because a, a phone can't handle that. I mean, is I mean they're getting faster and better every year, but uh, there's a lot of physics going on there. I could see maybe if Xbox 360 or PC being able to do a much better job at simulating it. Um, but the more you go, the more simulation you do, it gets more complex and it would slow it down. Um, the other things is that you'll never. I mean, I've never seen happen in one of these pinball simulations is that the ball jumps in a real pinball machine. Um, it hits targets. It bounces into the air sometimes. Um, one time, sometimes I'll have my ball literally jump over and fall into the command hole when it was like hitting that post there underneath the Borg ship. Um, on the Quicksilver, I've had the ball come down and hit the this area here on the flipper. This is before I changed the rubbers on it, but I haven't had it happen on the new rubbers, but I can see it happening. And the ball literally hops over the flipper and goes down the drain. Um, you never, I don't think I've ever seen that happen in a pinball simulation either. Um, the ball stays fixed to the play field pretty much. Um, you know, so all those kind of things, the nuances of a real pinball machine, um, you don't really experience uh, with a simulation. Um, but again, uh, it's, a, it's a great, great game. And uh, I say download it, support the developers of this for their love of Star Trek Next Generation. Um, I certainly love it. <laughs> um, but the... Uh, Again, it's very different. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I'm going to have some more videos for you. i got lots of things to talk about. And uh, just uh, wanted to uh, talk to you about this game because um, it really is. It's very. It's one of my favorite games. It is my favorite game. This is the game that I've always wanted. Um, if I had to get rid of all my games but one, this would be the one I would keep. Um, I could play this over and over again. I never get tired of playing it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other games that I do like as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next for video-wise. i got a lot of things to, to do. So, um, But I will uh, do some more videos. Thanks for watching again.